Since the August 21 release of Power BI, you can set the values of your constant lines using DAX miners. You might think, what's the big deal? Well, there are tons of different applications that are super useful. And the example that I'm going to show you in this video is how you can use constant lines as reference lines in a bar chart and combine that with conditional formatting for the data colors, which makes comparison between different categories easier. And the example that we're going to build looks like this over here. Now let's see how I did it. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. In my channel, I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's go to our example and build a simple column chart. Now here I have data for different Airbnb listings in Amsterdam. I'm planning my vacation. And what I want to do is compare the average price per person for different properties and for different number of people. Okay, so how many people the properties can accommodate. Now let's start off by taking the average price per person and dragging it onto values. And then I create a breakdown for the different property types. And I put that one onto the axis. All right, now I want to also have a breakdown for how many people it accommodates. So I take accommodates and put that over here, right above property type. So now we can expand down to the property type level. Okay, now this looks a little bit messy. However, it sorts basically everything in descending order. But what is important for me is that I have it grouped on the X axis, which makes comparison a little bit easier. Now to do that, we first of all go to formatting and then X axis. And then here we can turn concatenate labels off. Then we go to the header of the visualization, click on the three dots. And then here I want to sort by accommodate and property type. Now you see that it creates the groups for how many people it can accommodate. And now we just have to sort it the other way around in ascending order. Let's first start by doing some formatting changes. For example, we can go here to the X axis and then go to the title. And here I want to have number of people and property type. Okay, now the Y axis title I want to turn off. So let's go to the Y axis and turn off the title over here. And let's adjust the normal title of the chart. And let's rename it to Airbnb average price per person. So now that we are showing the average price per person for different property types and how many people these properties can accommodate, the next thing that we want to do is make comparison between the columns a little bit easier. Now, one way to do that is by adding a constant line, which will serve as a reference point to which we then can compare at the different prices for the different properties and how many people they accommodate. Now, to add this line, we just go to the analytics tab and here we have the constant line. Now let's add one. And this constant line, I'm going to rename to average price per person. And here we can just put in a fixed value of, let's say 50. Now you see the constant line pops up. Let's put the transparency to zero so that we can see it a little bit better. And then let's also add a data label to it. And I want to have the data label for the value and the name. So we have a reference line. However, it's still kind of difficult to see which columns are above it and which ones are below it. And the ones that are above it are too expensive and are not interesting for us. So I want to give those a different color. Now, to do that, we can use conditional formatting. However, for conditional formatting, we need also a DAX measure. So let's start there. Let's add a new DAX measure and let's call this measure above average price. And then here we can use an if statement and we want to check if the average price per person is bigger than or equal to the selected price of that constant uh, line. Now here we chose a price average price of 50. Now, if it is, then a one and otherwise we want to return a zero. Now let's close that if function and now use it for conditional formatting. Now we want to apply conditional formatting to the data colors. And let's click here on the conditional formatting button. Now here we want to format by a rule and we want to base it on the field that we just created. So above average price, and then we can set up the rule. So if we say, if the value is equal to, well, this needs to be a number. If it's equal to one, then that means it's above the line and I want to show it in gray. Okay. And otherwise the default color, which is blue. 
All right, now let's click on OK. I see now all of the columns that are above the line show in gray, everything below it in blue, which already makes it a little bit easy to see what's going on. Now, the next thing that we can do is add a slicer that lets us choose the average price per person that we are willing to pay. Now, to do that, we can make use of what if parameters. So let's go to modeling and then choose new parameter. And here the parameter name is going to be, well, the prices, the data type, whole number. And we want to start at one. And let's say that we don't want to go over 100. So that's the maximum. And then the default, we can put to 50. Now, let's click on OK. That what if parameter is basically just a disconnected table. Huh? So it's not connected to any other table in your data model, which has one column basically with all of the prices that we want to be able to choose from. Now, because it's a column, it can be used on a slicer. And that's basically what we have over here. The next thing that I want to do is connect that slicer to the constant line. Now, one other thing that was generated was this measure that shows the value that's selected in the slicer. Now we can use that measure for the constant line. All right, so let's go back to the chart and then here analytics. And instead of hard coding the 50, we're going to click here on that FX button for conditional formatting. We want to format it by a field. And that field is going to be, well, here in the prices table, the price value. Now let's click on OK. And now the constant line is connected to the slicer. So that means if you change the value here for the selected price, let's say we put it to 60, you see the constant line goes up. However, the conditional formatting is still wrong. And that's because we hard coded that 50 in the DAX measure. So let's update that as well. So I go back to the measure that we wrote before. So instead of the 50, we can replace that with the price value. So over here, we want to have the price value. So now the colors of the columns are also dependent on the selected price in the slicer. So now we have the main functionality that we were looking for. Let's now just update the formatting a little bit for that slicer and for the main chart. So for the slicer, I would go here to formatting and then under general, I turn responsiveness off so that I can resize it. And then put it in the top right corner of the chart. Now here for the chart itself, I'm going to get rid of these grid lines. So here on the Y axis, turn the grid lines off, all right? And then here for the X axis, I want to have thicker border lines in between the different categories, so that makes it a little bit clearer. So X axis, and then here we have the grid lines, and here we can go for a solid line, and maybe make it a little bit thicker. And then let's also go to the title, and change that one to blue. And that's it, now let's try it out. Let's change the price from 60, to 70, I see it nicely updates. Now, the only things that I think could make this chart just a little bit better is if we could also set the font size for the label that we add to the constant line. And also, I think it would be a little bit better if instead of having vertical columns, we would have horizontal bars. Okay, so the first chart that you find here, which makes it easier to read. However, then you lose these buckets. So it says now one apartment, one bed and breakfast, instead of how we had it before with the cluster column chart, we have nicely these buckets, uh, which you get when you turn off concatenate labels. You might think, okay, easy. You just choose that first option, the horizontal bars, then you go to format, Y axis, and then from here, turn concatenate labels off. Uh, it's not there. Okay, so it would be nice to have that option here as well. I hope that you got some value out of this video. If you did, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, then put it in the comment section below. And I hope to see you in the next video.